I can't say I love you no more Cause my friends gon' judge me for sure It took some time but I realize You do me wrong but it feels right Yeah, I'm uh I'm excited and honored to sit here. Yeah. It's your first official on camera interview. Yeah, like you done some you done some zooms, but like this is in person. Absolutely. We're gonna still social distance, so it's a pleasure to link up with you, man. Um if you could describe to me how this past year has been for you. Uh the most bittersweet year. Like I think I'll say that I'll ever experience. Because while like all this stuff is happening, yeah, the work I kind of feel guilty about the success that I'm having. Gotcha. Because of just the way society is. Yeah. It's like, it feels very weird and dark right now. Um, how do you combat that personally? How do you kind of get out of that personally where you don't necessarily be so hard on yourself? I'm still trying to find that answer. Yeah. Cause it's like, yeah, I want to celebrate, like take time hitting a hundred million streams or, you know, all these accolades. But then my cousin just got laid off because of the coronavirus right. and they're, they're using their own unemployment. Yeah. So it's like, I don't really want to like broadcast the stuff that's happening. Yeah, you know what I, mean? I get it. But what does help me is I, some, some people I thought it was like that, yeah. but they see hope in me. So right. like while that's happening to them, they see this and th this makes them feel a lot better. Yeah, this year, March 27th, I believe, yeah. 2020, you dropped Take Time. Um, for me personally, I started listening <laughs> to your music around the start of the quarantine, which coincides with the release date. Yeah, yeah. Um, describe to me the process in recording Take Time. How was how was that for you? Uh, so, recording Take Time itself, the world was completely different. Yeah. And I start. I've been I've been working on that for, I'll say a year, but mm -hmm. Vanish is as old as like three years. Really. I released it on SoundCloud in 2017. Yeah. And then I took it down. What made you yeah. take it down? Um. I was like finding my sound more. Right. And I thought that that wasn't it, but what I needed to do was just kind of refine that song more. Right. So I'll say I've been work. it's, Take Time is my life's work. Yeah. So that process was just a compilation of like me listening to people, being empathetic, having these conversations, yeah. and then turning it into one um, overarching story. Yeah. And yeah, it was just in the. That's just the the, the concept and conceptualized uh, part of it. But as far as like the sonics and yeah. the technicality behind right. it, I was just going to the studio. I would lock. Yeah. I would go to the studio like two weeks at a time every day, take some time off to breathe and let right. my my brain um, just develop more stories. Yeah. And then just it was it was just grinding out for like a year. Did it shock you at all the reception that you've gotten so far? Because you mentioned 100 million streams. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I have this tweet when I, I dropped Like I Want You. The yeah. first week, it got like 50,000 streams and I was like, yo, I'm, I'm lit. <laughs> like, I don't know, I, nobody can tell me nothing. I'm right. lit. I got 50K streams. And um, I made a tweet and I said, by my birthday, I think my birthday was two, two months or a month after the tweet, I was like, I want my very first million streams. Yeah. And like, what I wanted, I get the, I I have like monthly millions of streams now, yeah. so I'm just like, yeah, it shocked me. And right. I already know I have this this voice that it's an acquired taste. Like, it's not a voice you hear right away. For some people, it's like, do I like this voice? Yeah. You know? So, some like, the, the usual reaction before, when they hear my voice yeah. is it's interesting, and then they say it sounds good. You know what right. I mean? It's not the other way around. It's not this. His voice is nice, and then it's interesting. So, so I was kind of concerned yeah. that people just weren't going to accept something new. Would you say it's been an insecurity of yours that you kind of had to deal with? Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Like, like I, I was singing, I was singing like um, Miguel songs. Right. You know what I mean? With the the higher, um, t like just register. Right. And then I'll say like eighth grade, yeah. going into high school. My dad has a, a lower deep voice. Yeah. So then, going into high school, my voice just just dropped. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I don't know how to sing anymore. So you I just, just said it just like that. Yeah, I was like, oh yeah, I accepted it. So that's when, but that was also the best thing that ever happened to me too. Yeah. That moment, because that's when I started writing. 
Right. Oh, okay. So yeah. the moment when you thought that you couldn't sing anymore, you just shifted your focus to be a songwriter. Yeah, not even songwriter. I was just writing stories. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because you're a very visual person whenever you construct the projects that you have. Like, Take Time is very much meeting a good person, having a honeymoon stage, the breakup, and then saying things that you probably regret in yeah. that whole project. So when you craft it, when it's all said and done, what was your mindset with this particular EP? Yeah, so like you said, Take Time is just a situation that yeah. started and went bad. Right. And when it's all said and done is the motions that follow after a situation that goes bad. Yeah. So like for me, um, this is just coming from like a, a guy's perspective. Yeah. And just a guy that's around a bunch of guys, like the first thing is like, whatever, like, you 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 know what I mean? Like yeah. the bravado of like, I don't need it. I don't yeah. need it. I'm the best. You, I'm your best anyway. Right. Even if it's just denial, just to, just me trying to cope with the fact that I, I'm hurt. Right. So I mask it by saying like, whatever. Yeah. I, I I don't need you. I'm the best you ever gonna get. And then, you you get to last time, mm -hmm. and the, the trend there's a a cool transition we added from still your best to last time it's a phone ring yeah. and that's because once you once your friends leave and all that bravado dies down it's just you and your phone so you 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 try to get that closure yeah. or you claim that it's closure and you say you're gonna make one more phone call just to like end it wrap it all up yeah. end it so that's when we have last time and then that's the duet with snow Ligger. Yeah. so when you're crafting the, these projects and you're crafting these songs, are you drawing from personal experiences or are you drawing from the people around you and the stories you might hear from people you work with or people you come across? Yeah, so both. Yeah. So Take Time was 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 mine. I'll say like 50-50, mm -hmm. but this one is is mostly me. Yeah, it's a, it's yeah. such a difference between with this one and Take Time because on this one, I feel like you're coming from a place that's a bit more confident. You're talking your shit a bit more. Yeah, yeah. Not only from a perspective of it goes as a relationship and telling the story, but just as an artist in general. So do you feel that elevation when you crafted this EP compared to when you crafted Take Time? Just yeah, personally. For sure, yeah. for sure. So when I started working on Take Time, I'm, this is my first time even just like in like real studios, yeah. for real. Right. And this is this is me learning the, the process, like learning like what all this even is my yeah. intro to the world so now i have 24 28 minutes of work out there yeah. you know i i opened up on a tour um and now i kind of have a bit of notoriety yeah. you know what i mean and I, I have a i know that there's people who appreciate this tone in my voice yeah. so now that's not in my mind so now i'm just like working to make the best song yeah you're kind of working the best version of Gibeon. You're not worried yeah, yeah. about all the, the outside. Yeah, so it's like, especially like, just the way I approach it. Like I have, I have brothers who who will come up to me and be like, "Yo, this song is trash." What? Yeah. So I'm like, <laughs> I, if that's if my brother can say that, and yeah. I'm just like, "Oh yeah, I feel you." Right. But like on some, not it's trash. They just don't like it or yeah. something. And I won't, there's literally, there won't be any effect because I'll be like, yeah, it's just not for you. So that's a great question. So who? who Who's your barometer for what you know is good or not good? Like right. who gives you that? So my my team, I have like a a, a, a small circle. I mean, yeah. Regal's my engineers in it, but my manager Simon and Ek yeah. and Seven. Yeah. Like I trust that group so much with their opinion. Yeah. Like due to the fact that we our minds made uh, take time yeah. and people appreciate take time. Like I feel like I don't need to seek any other validation outside of that. It's a great point right there. You know I like mean? that a lot. And I think that's what can mess people up is when they start getting too many opinions. Too many so I like think kitchen. you need a small nucleus. Yeah. And I think that's where some artists are, they're really talented, yeah. but they don't have that 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 nucleus. Because I could make songs all the time and sometimes I'll make a song mm -hmm. and I'm not sure how good it is or how if it's a vibe until I send it to this nucleus. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then it's the selection process. You, you have Snow Allegra featured on this new EP. Yeah, yeah. You and Snow have a great relationship. Describe to me the feeling when she first came to you and personally invited you on tour. Um, so where was I? I forgot what studio it was, but I had no... Well, I had two songs out, but they were like years old yeah. and like this was before anything. Yeah. Um, so this was before Take Time? Yeah, this was before Like I Want wow. You. And I was at the... I, I think it was Record Plant yeah. out here. And... <clears throat> Wheels upstairs and Seven Thomas because he he already knew her. Yeah. He invited her to the, to the session mm -hmm. and then that's when I met her for the first time and we was talking. Yeah. 
and she was like telling me telling us about how she's going on tour soon and i was just like because the whole concept of a tour is crazy to me like you go in somewhere right and there's a a room full of people singing <laughs> your lyrics yeah and this is me fresh off of like a nine to five so right. i'm just like what and this is me not even thinking that music as a career is possible mm -hmm. and i'm just like and i've I never been on tour yeah. and the most i've performed in front of people was like 50. so so was it was it overwhelming at first when she asked you when no you, i was i was excited because yeah. i've been like <clears throat> low-key like building up to that yeah. without knowing because i'll do like small stuff in um long beach where i'll just go to a room and like 30 to 50 of my friends are come right and everybody in there like oh, what are we doing here? But they still support it. Yeah. But really, that was just me like practicing. Of course, yeah. And I, I've done. I was doing that for like a year or two. And then by the time I was ready to get on on there, people were like, "This can't be. There's no way that this is your first tour." Yeah. But it, I mean, you felt like you put in those ten thousand hours to get yeah, to the point where you exactly. Like, no. And sometimes those ten thousand hours be disguised, and you know, yeah. you don't even know you're working on them. Yeah, the recording process for that song between you and Snow was it a lot like just over Zoom? You send the you send the track nah, and she, nah, nah, oh, y'all well, got in the I studio. Had to make sure, yeah. I love it. She was in that. She had a. I forgot again, but um, I think it was like No ID Studio, yeah. and she was like she in the studio and I was like yeah we, we gotta work on this one like right. together cause I don't want it to sound like a feature yeah. especially for what we talking about right, for sure. I don't want it to sound like I had the song and sent it to you I want it to sound like we in the same booth singing on the same mic at the same time I love it and I want it to sound like a conversation between us two yeah so in, in order to achieve that just that energy and that aura it, it has to be together so I pulled up on her and we were in the studio we had the music right. and then we started having the conversation, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just how all my songs start. Yeah. And we just sat down and started writing. I, I love how impactful your mom has been towards your career and yeah. your life and how much you champion her and how much she's always involved. Her, her uh, might have been a voicemail at the intro yeah. of the beach. Uh, I, I love that. So how impactful has she been just to your life in general? She she said the best possible thing like an artist, someone wants to, who wants to be an artist will possibly be. She said like, like your life is what you make it mm -hmm. and she's actually the reason like i really like kind of noticed the talent so yeah. to go to go even further back to when i started having an affinity for music yeah. at all my mom would just play music around the house right. same songs over and over what, she, what she wasn't good talking? for being diverse <laughs> it was just probably what mary we j blige okay. anita baker Sade, and then it's like after waking up hearing it play yeah. like i like these songs but like the hundredth time right in a row and then i start like even there's this thing even when a song is annoying you, yeah you start humming it of course it's in your head. It's so in your i started humming it and yeah. then i started singing it and she started no noticing that i could stay in like pitch right. and, and key so she would start having me sing to family members at birthday party just really? to be like look he can sing and then i'm singing to like my 30 year old uncles and it's just like, the reason why that's funny is black parents do that it's they like, they like hey do that dance for your uncle right quick <laughs> exactly. like, i don't want to do this right <laughs> like, i get it i'm like right now he he turning 30. Like, he don't want me singing to but him. why why I'm you eight. Have, right <laughs> i am eight years old so but what i didn't realize is like yeah. just singing the songs and stuff over and over like I was building my craft again, like yeah. secretly doing those 10,000 yeah. hours and not even realizing it. So she she's a big part of that, like the birth of me, like just yeah. singing. Yeah. You talked about a little bit earlier, like the idea of maybe none of this success coming to fruition. Was there ever a point where you thought to yourself that this might not happen? Uh, Yeah, when I put Vanish on uh, SoundCloud, 20, 2017. Really? I was like, Cause I started thinking and I'm like, it all comes down to circumstance. Mm -hmm. Like at a certain point, it's being in the right place at the right time. And I started thinking like that. And then I was like, I'ma just put, I asked myself if, would I make music if no one ever heard it? Right. And then I was like, yeah. Like even if it's just me hearing it, I'll right. do it. And that was just me to asking myself if I loved it. Right. So I put Vanish on SoundCloud. And then I was like, I got 5,000 streams. And yeah. I was like, he's all right. Hold on. Yeah, he's like, all right, I got some. Five, yeah. Hold on. People are listening. So yeah. I was like, let me, I have something. So let yeah. me hone it. Yeah. And then I realized my mindset changed. It's not like it's just circumstance and you get lucky. It's when, when that op there's opportunities everywhere. Yeah. 
it's just a matter of are you ready when the opportunity comes to you mm. you know what i mean mm -hmm. so even like this the feature with drake yeah. i could have easily just had that feature and then had nothing ready right you know what i mean but i had this body of work take time ready yeah. ready to go so preparation met the opportunity and that's when success is created you know what i mean so it's yeah. like that's now i just try to stay ready now you played that correctly because i i didn't really want to talk about the drake thing because that's easy to get overshadowed sometimes yeah, just yeah. how big of, of an artist drake is and yeah, i yeah. remember watching an interview where drake said that the the most important time in an artist's career is kind of where you are now where you still have the ability to kind of get new fans and people discovering you for the mm -hmm. first time yeah and i thought you played it correctly when chicago freestyle comes out people are trying to figure out who Giveon is, who's this voice that everybody's hearing, right. and then you have a body of work that can follow it right yeah, exactly. after, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, at that point, I'm I'm Giveon from Chicago Freestyle. Take Time drops, now I'm Giveon from Take Time. Exactly. When you were at Bubba Gump Shrimp Company, <laughs> and they made you put that shrimp suit on and go out there, God. that had to be, that had to I, I was like. I would've quit, I'm gonna be honest with you. I would've quit. You know what it was? The reason I didn't quit is because yeah. it was so like flexible. I told myself I was gonna be there for two years. Right. I ended up being there for five. Oh shit. I quit yeah. and was like, well, it's gonna be what it's gonna be. Did you have any plans when you decided to quit? Like had all this, was all this lined up for you when you decided to just quit? Um, no, it wasn't. But I've also been big, I've always been big on just like manifestation too. Of course. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, like whenever I try to like, because I, I want to talk to just kids and like go back because yeah. I started a music program right. and stuff. I, I want to <laughs> give them that, but yeah. kids probably want something tangible like that they could go do right now. So I try not to, I try to stay away from manifestation, but it's so important. But the reason I brought that up, because if I'm not mistaken, you saw SZA when you were wow, at Bubba yeah, Gump. Yeah, so right. I wasn't even working at Bubba Gump. Okay. I, had the, I had my third interview. I don't, why is Bubba Gump interviewing people three times? <laughs> Like no, that's a fair point. Now you like, got a point because I like, had a, bro. You want me to clean the table or not? Oh, the third interview. I'm like, what? <laughs> I'll start interviewing them. Like, let me ask you some questions. Yeah, but nah, that crazy. third interview. Yeah. On my way there, mm -hmm. I seen this um, this girl. Yeah. And she had that's this is when she had this, the, the like ginger orange yeah. hair. And I was like, dang, that hair looked familiar. Right. And then um, we walked past. And then I just seen her and felt her energy. She was like, had this infectious smile. She was just chilling. Yeah. And I was like, you scissor. <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, she was joking. She was like, yeah. no. And then I was like, yes, you are. <laughs> and then um, I sang for her. Right. And then I, um, she was like, wow, like, that's amazing. Like, she told me, like, come come hang out, like, at the studio. This yeah. is when she was working on something. Right. And um, I, um, I think I was like 18 at the time or something. And I was like, <laughs> I'm so, she's so nice because yeah. I was destroying her phone. She gave you a number? Her number. Okay. To, like she was actually being like a genuine, you know how people are when you right. actually meet them. For sure. But SZA is like an actually sweet, genuine person. So I'm blowing up her, her phone all the time. Like embarrassing amount. Yeah. And then I don't know what happened. I, I either lost it or, right. or she blocked me, hopefully. I hope she blocked me. You hoped it. I was, I, like, I, needed to, crazy? I needed to be stopped. Oh, but wow. I was so excited. And then the final show of Snow Allegra's tour yeah. at the Wilton in LA, mm -hmm. she, um, they said, SZA wants to come. Like, SZA wants to get on your list. And I was like, why y'all asking me? Of right. course she could, like, what? Um, and then she comes, she see my set, yeah. and then she go backstage, and then she tell me how much she 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 enjoyed it and yeah. she liked it. And I was like, I could tell she didn't remember the story, right? But I was like, this is a cool full circle moment. I should tell her the story. Yeah. She not gonna know what I'm talking about. She we gonna laugh it out, right? Um, I told her the story, and she was like, No, I don't remember. And then I was like, Yes, you like cool. That's she embarrassing. Don't the, she don't remember the numbers. And we go in the green room, <laughs> and we just all chilling. And she was like, Wait. I was like, no, please don't. Don't do this. She's like, I remember. I was like, oh, oh, I almost changed the story. I was no, like, nah, I get it, that bro. wasn't me. You that just gotta just keep it pushing. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Act like that shit never happened. That wasn't me. That was not me. But I'm sure but she was a sweetheart about it. Super was, nice. Yeah. And it was such a, I love full circle moments like that. Of course. And just to have her there at my very first tour. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just like 
I, it's just crazy to see stuff like especially because yeah. I'm a big fan of storytelling for sure that's just everything that I do I tell stories yeah. so that's just like a beautiful story it's damn near like a movie like that's yeah like incredible. it looks it seems written yeah uh, when I mention the song Fly Me to the Moon what does that mean to you well that song is the key to me yeah um, that song is the reason I found all my confidence mm -hmm. after 8th grade in my voice pitching down that song is the reason I discovered like baritone singers. Yeah. Like that that song changed my life for real. Yeah, so Seven Thomas was the was the missing link for me. Mm -hmm. Um I mean resources wise mm -hmm. and just like being an artist wise, because knowing how to sing mm -hmm. and having a voice doesn't make you an artist. Right. Uh, I think being an artist is having a having a sound yeah. and just knowing what it is that you who you are and what you want to talk about. So he added that that sound for me yeah. you know what i mean and like i have a lot of like pride for long beats too but yeah. toronto sound is just like what toronto has done for r&b yeah. it's just like you you can't deny it yeah, of course and he's or just canada yeah. and he's from canada toronto yeah. or i'm pretty sure something like that That's i don't know specific to canada right. but and he he helped me with not that I was like, it wasn't like a purposeful, like, yo, give me that, yeah. give me that Toronto, that Canada sauce. Right. But he like merged that world for me, yeah, especially sure. when it comes to just, just drums and, and keeping it youthful and keeping the bounce on the songs. And even if the song is slow, yeah. you still getting like a head nod out of people. Right. Of course. Mm -hmm. So Seven Thomas was a, a huge yeah. part for that. You're in a very, it's a, I would say this is a great point in your career because you're just like, you're right there. You know what I'm saying? You're, yeah. you're, you're, you're still climbing, you're still elevating, there's still so much room to grow, but you still have all this great success that's in front of you. Yeah. Um, in, a, in a perfect world, what would you say, how would you define your success when it's all said and done? No pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> like, just when it's all done? Yeah, when it's all done. Um, I'll say what I want. Mm -hmm. I just want the, the Giveon, mm -hmm. that name, Giveon, to just be something well respected just as an art, you know what I mean? Like just that that tag of having Giveon on something, you know it's gonna be quality. Yeah. And eventually it expands to other mediums. Right. Like I'm big on film yeah. and I'm big on fashion. Right. So like even I wanted to get to a point where if you see a blank white shirt, yeah. it looks like a blank white shirt, but then you found out Giveon did that blank white shirt, you like, that blank white shirt might be cool. <laughs> right, you know right. What I mean? yeah, yeah. So I just want my name to hold so much weight at the end of the day that I could I could walk into any room in any medium and people would just respect it just right just because it's my name.